Alex Christick now begins his preparations for the final shot. Fantastic, 14 centimeters. So we're going to be 14 centimeters down from the mastoid. The ground team makes last minute measurements and places a target on the JFK torso, indicating the precise location of the back wound identified in the autopsy. And go nuts with that gaff tape. Yeah. Measurements are always triple checked. Okay. okay, we're ready to go. Alex climbs 60 feet up to the exact height of Oswald's sixth floor sniper's nest. The dog on the skin. Uh -huh. Once these torsos are unwrapped, Alex has only two minutes to make the shot. All right, take the plastic off now. They're just clearing the cellophane. I'm going to give Peter two minutes. Alex checks the wind speed and direction for his final calculations. Up around six meters per second now. Gusting from three to six. The high-speed cameraman verifies focus and illumination. That edge, that's looking pretty good. Okay, Peter, the timer started. Yep. You've got one minute. We're away. We're happy. Yep, we're away. Alex takes a final reading. On a 60-foot high shooting platform, Dr. Alex Christick loaded an identical round into a Manlicher Carcano rifle and fired a single shot. Okay, that's in the black. Uh, right at six o'clock. I'm happy with that uh, sight picture. But where's the projectile going? Hmm, that's interesting. The projectile there? It's definitely exited. The bullet passed through both torsos and the wrist block, but there is no sign of it in the gelatin thigh. Where has it gone? We can review the video if you like. At 3,000 frames per second, our high-speed camera can capture the path of the bullet. It struck Kennedy in the neck, streaking through to Conley, then clearly exited and moved through the wrist block. Leaving the wrist, it only had enough energy to bounce on the thigh block and tumble off into the brush. Amazingly, Alex has replicated the magic bullet shot. It went directly behind to the right. The team begins to search for our magic bullet, while Alex and Wes compare the wounds to the historical oh, record. Were we roughly on the right spot there? Absolutely. The actual shot was just a little bit further to the right, hmm. underneath his armpit, a keyhole, perfect keyhole, hmm. through his back. But still, it managed roughly to go in the correct area of Connolly, come out about right nipple height, went through the equivalent of uh, the forearm, gone down with... Here's the <laughs> oh, very good. All right, well, there it is. And it is somewhat deformed. It's not what I'd call pristine in the, in the least. Why is our bullet more deformed than the magic bullet? And why was our bullet unable to penetrate Connolly's thigh? To answer these questions, Wesley Fisk takes the anatomical torso of Governor Connolly to the radiology department of the Royal Adelaide Hospital. Radiologist Sarah Brookman has agreed to perform a CAT scan on the torso. Let's go through the body a little bit and have a look. Okay. okay. Speared track, there's some air there. Ah, now that looks very interesting. So we've got ribbed fragments there, haven't we? Yeah. Sarah converts this CAT scan into a three-dimensional image. Now the rib fracture can be seen distinctly. Well, we've actually got two ribs. The bullet broke two ribs. It must have turned and struck them sideways. When Wes looks at an X-ray of the wrist block, the forensic picture becomes clear. Well, uh, we don't think that the bullet had enough velocity at that stage to actually push any bone fragments actually out of the block. After hitting two ribs, the bullet was now moving too slowly to shatter the wrist bone. And when it deflected down to the thigh, it failed to penetrate the skin. The fact that it hit two ribs also explains why our bullet was more damaged than Oswald's, which only hit one. Nevertheless, our shot has almost exactly duplicated the path of the magic bullet. And the results, I believe, 
have taken the magic out of that bullet. We demonstrated six wounds with that one shot, even though we had one projectile that slammed into two ribs. I'm absolutely certain that if we hadn't lost that velocity, that the bullet would have continued on its path and embedded in the thigh block.